Good afternoon. For the saints of the Lord around the world, in this part of the world we are about to start the Sabbath, and that makes us very joyful. But before we move to that, we would like to conclude the day by going again to God's Word to find what He has for us in this term of commitment to Him. I would like to ask you to bow with me in prayer before we start talking about the Lord, His Word, His love, His greatness. Let us pray together. Father, we are so thankful for the privilege of worshiping You. And as we are approaching the Sabbath, we again come to You for Your blessings. Bless us now as we study your word, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. You know, this term, God is great, we have often used it, and sadly, in our days, we hear it used so often uh, on the battlefield, we hear it used as a uh, suicide bomber, uh, launches his or herself against a tank, against a battle wagon. Sadly, we even hear it when innocent people are being decapitated. And also we hear it when hundreds of girls are being kidnapped and held uh, for political reasons. God is great. And that term has been used and perverted, I would say, in a sense that it diminishes its meaning. You should know that this word is not so often used in the Bible nor in the spirit of prophecy. It was amazing as I was preparing, I looked for the word in the Bible, God is great, and I found only one instance of it. I find instances of the greatness of the Lord, etc. But one describing God is great, I found it only in the book of Job, verse 26, where it says, Behold, God is great, and we know him not, neither can the number of his years searched out. And again, in Psalm 86, 10, we find another way of using the term God is great. For you are great, and the wondrous things you alone are God. It is, it is so elevated, so important, that even the Bible and the spirit of prophecy don't use that word too often. I stand to be corrected, but as far as my research has taken me, I have found I found very, very few instances where the term God is great is being used. In the spirit of prophecy, we find one uh, reference or several other references, but one particularly where Sister White is mentioning God is great, but not in the sense of describing God, but how God does things. She says, God is great in counsel and mighty in works, for thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruits of his doings. This was in a letter, 139 of April 17, 1907. What is so important about this thing of God is great? Psalms 135 verse 5 also says, I know that the Lord is great, that our Lord is greater than all gods. And again, but coming out to say God is great as it's being used today, as it is being abused today in many instances. Um, it has been said that only God can describe his greatness because it is beyond us to understand, it is beyond us to measure, it is beyond us to even try to describe the greatness of God. We cannot. Human beings are incapable of describing the greatness of our Lord. And so when it comes to that, we find that our perception of God has to be understood 
like the illustration Jesus gave about the Holy Spirit, that it is like the wind. You see its effects, but you cannot see it from where it comes from or where it is heading or where it is going. We have to learn to accept this. God is great. His greatness, we accept it because I can't measure it. I can't measure it. And the things about God tells me of his greatness, how great he is. Eyes cannot see him, but still he is spiritually visible. I cannot see him with my eyes, but I perceive his influence in my life by the spirituality that comes from him to me. It is also that we cannot comprehend him, but still he manifests himself in grace. He, he makes me feel loved whenever his grace is manifested to me, and that is always. He is beyond our utmost thoughts, and still human faculties can conceive him. It is difficult to describe. As a child, I was talking to an atheist once, and uh, this atheist thought of flooring me because I was witnessing to him about God, and he said, describe me how God is. And of course, my childish mind, I, I couldn't. I started to give him some descriptions. He said, oh, you're talking about this and about that. I said, you know what? I don't mind uh, knowing how he is. I know that he has saved me. And that is the important thing. And this is the issue that we have to deal with as we are dealing with this issue of the greatness of God. We can understand God. For instance, my God is not afraid of sin. Because some people say, if he knew, if he knew that Satan would have sinned, why did he create him? Well, he is not afraid of sin because he had the perfect answer to sin, Jesus Christ. He paid the utmost price so that we can be saved saved today. His love is limitless. We offend, he bids us to repent, and he accepts us again, and he forgives us. Ellen White helps us in the book Education, page 132, where she says, the greatness of God is to us incomprehensible. And this is why I believe Neither the Bible nor the spirit of prophecy goes into depth of describing God is great because we accept this by faith. Having said this, however, we need to understand how we as human beings can deal with this awesome God. He is so great that only he himself can describe his greatness. We cannot. We dare not because it is only God that can do it. But you know, when it comes to us as human beings, there is something about this God that I want to emphasize this afternoon. We read in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 3. It may not be considered the apropos verse for this moment, but yes, we need to look at it. Deuteronomy 13, 3 we read from God's word when it says, you must not listen to the words of the prophet or dreamer of that prophet or dreamer, meaning of prophets and charlatans that were trying to, to make the people stray from the way of the Lord. But the Bible goes on and says, these things that were happening, the Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. This is the point. The Lord your God is testing you to see if you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. The greatness of the Lord, the testing of the Lord, even though we do not understand him, he comes to us and he says, I want to know if you really believe. Somebody have said, stewardship is what we do after we say, I believe. 
And if we believe the Lord is testing us, as Moses says here in Deuteronomy, the Lord, your God, is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. Testing if we are really committed to him. We have believed and how deep, how far, how wide, how high does this belief go? Do we really, really believe to turn our, our life totally over to him? For the Hebrew people, that testing was to listen to false prophets or going after false gods. In our days, the Lord is still testing our loyalties. He's still testing our commitments. He is still looking at us to see how much we love him. You know, when you really love, when you really love, you give it all. We cannot stop thinking about the person we love. Have you tried? Or if you have not experienced it, you have not loved. Because when you love a person, it is your thoughts day and night. You even dream about the person. Whatever happens, you're ready to relate whatever is going on with your life at that moment to that loved one. Oh, we, we heard of people who, who were in experiences where they were about to die and the, 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 the thing they think most about is to write a note so that their loved ones can know that they were thinking about them even in the hour of death. You cannot stop talking about the person you love. You brag about the person. You want others to know how much you love this person. You have nothing to hide. You cannot stop wishing this person well. You cannot stop doing anything to please that person. When you really love, you are always constantly looking for an opportunity to make that person happy, to please that person. In other words, you know, when you really love, your life evolves around the person you love. Every enjoyment you have, you want to share with that person. Every sorrow you have, you don't want the person to know. You want to protect them. And yet, when you share that sorrow, you find solace, you find help, you find everything by sharing it with a loved one. And this is what it means to love your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Everything in life has to evolve around this loving the Lord, to be committed to Him. As we go through life, we have to think of this, even though I cannot understand this great God, but my love to Him, my commitment to Him will show in the way how I relate to him. First, he is everything to me. He is everything around me. He is everything that I have. He is everything that I got. And he is everything that I want to share because I love him. And because of that love, I can accept, I can relate, I can give. It is not a burden. It is not obligatory. It is just sharing my love with the one that I love so much. I want to conclude with these words from Ma Martin Luther, who said, I have held many things in my hands, and I have lost them all. But whatever I have placed in God's hand, that I still possess. My dear brothers and sisters, whatever you place in God's hand, that you will always possess. Your life, everything about you, continue trusting. The Lord is testing us today as he tested the Hebrew people. Be blessed. Love your Lord with all your heart, with all your soul. May the Lord bless you to that end.
Look, Daddy. Everything we own is a blessing from God. All of it belongs to Him. God only requires one-tenth to be returned to Him as an act of worship and an expression of our faithfulness to Him. Tithe is God's money. And in tithing, we're simply returning to the owner what rightly belongs to Him. And as we faithfully return a tenth of our income, we will continue to provide for us according to His promises. Tithing is one of the most tangible ways to experience God. It's a most rewarding step of faith and a wonderful testimony of our faith. Take that step of faith today and experience God's faithfulness. This one's for Jesus. Remember, stewardship is my all in response to God's all.